There we go. You know what? I might go feral today, I think. Shoes off. Ah. Oh, bare feet, finally. Oh, that feels so much better. I've been wearing them all day. Oh, yeah, snakes, no worries. Man, I've got to get that one that I lost here yesterday. Just it's bugging me. Can't eat, can't sleep. <sighs> yeah. Hey Sith, how are you, mate? Welcome. I feel like Dicky Knee from Hey Hate Saturday. Sorry, Mr. Summers, remember? Okay, handbrake on. Good, that's a start. You having a good day, Sith? What's going on? Right. Good. MW, how are you, mate? Let's see if we've got anything that'll hit a soft plastic. Actually, that's a bit silly. I need to be... No, here. Needs to be here, hang on. KC, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. It's not really gonna do anyone any favors, is it? Sorry about the bald head, fam. Right, that's better. Much better. Let's get this right. A little bit of zoomies. All right, welcome everyone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the boredom, mate. How's Texas today? Good? <laughs> nah, same one, MW. The other day, right, in here, we dropped a brim that I couldn't turn its head. And needless to say, I've been losing a bit of sleep over it. So today, we're going to go in stealth mode. I'm going to put the esky down there. I'm going to plonk my bottom on the esky. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wait for it to bite. So if you don't... Um, oh, someone's been marining, naughty buggers. All right, so what we've got is it's afternoon. So the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, so it's going to be heading probably in that direction. Now what it does, at different times of the day, the sun will make different forms of habitat for fish. So in this snag here, I don't know whether you can see it. Because of the shade from that tree and also this one, there's a little pocket of shade in there. I bet you there's a fish in there. Any money, right? I bet you there's a fish in there, okay? Hello, sir, drink water. Oh, really? Yeah, look, um, I think it's a bit of a detriment um, I think it's a bit of a detriment when you watch people s and they're continually swearing. I mean, in I, I swear, but only when I'm really pissed off. And, you know, if I'm swearing, <laughs> watch out. But, uh, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, F this, F that, C this, doesn't really sort of um, do anyone any favours, you know? And ironically, you can go to a pub and get that content for free, you know? So why would you pay for it, you know? Right. Yeah. 
Now, I managed to find a herring from our last boat trip, fam. It's a bit dry. What I'm going to do is, just going to chuck it on the edge there and get it to start defrosting. And then what we're going to do is, I'm going to ground bait. Is that another herring? No, potty mullet, you legend. Right. Hang on. Let's let that defrost as well. So, yeah, I've been working since uh, 5.30 this morning, fam, so I finished a bit earlier. I thought I'd come down and, you know, have a fish because I'm addicted to fishing. So, great. Mm. That feeling of cow shit between your toes, ah, brings back memories. Right. Hey, Lowy, how are you, buddy? Mansy, Will? Yeah, it does, Sith. And I mean, you know, I don't know who you're referring to, and don't mention any names. Let's just, you know, not worry about it. But you can go to a pub or a bar and get that for free. You know what I mean? And get drugged at the same time. But... I mean, yeah. Anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about what we're doing, which is important. Not worrying about what other people are doing. All right. Now. This is a really good sign, fam. There's a whole school of mice and shrimp in here, which is good. They're on the edge, which means there should be fish. Are they shrimp or are they bait fish? Anyway, we'll figure it out in a second. Right. Now, I just need this herring to thaw out. What we'll do... Right. Hmm, a knife would be helpful, wouldn't it? Matty Evans, how are you, bud? Oh, thank you, Sith. That's really nice of you. And look, people, thank you very much for giving up your time to come in and watch. Uh, we've hit 1,250 hours of watch time today. We're up to 1,486 uh, subscribers. If you're new to the stream please subscribe and above all else please like the stream okay because the youtube algorithm recognizes how many people like the stream believe it or not i was quite shocked as to the difference in this and another you know harry potter thing which won't be mentioned so yeah and um yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sith. It's a bit surreal, to be quite honest with you, because, um, you know... All right, Femo. Now, does anybody uh, remember the great Australian comedian Rodney Roode? And yes, he's pissed off, ladies and gentlemen. That's me at the moment, because I dropped that fish the other day. All right, we've got the rig. Now... When you're using baits, Famo, right, one thing I always do, and this is like the little one percenters, I've cut the mule, uh, the tail off the muley, right? So see in the middle you've got the backbone? When you bait this, you want to go in on one side of the backbone and come out on the other side. But the other thing is too, when you're baiting these, you've got more chance of the fish hitting where the flesh is exposed than the actual tail. So see that? I've got the hook going in here, going around the backbone of the fish and coming out on this side, and that's perfectly concealed. See that? All you can see is the eye, a little bit of the bend. When it hits the bait, the hook will go through and the point will get it. That's the plan, Stan. Right. Now, I need to calm down. Right. So. Oh. Okay, so the rivers, actually that's why this is a, such a good spot fam, on that side it's going that way, on this side it's going this way, so there must be a swirl here, that's why there's so many fish here. That, spot on. So what I did is, 
there was just a little pocket in there right oh okay now stay The herring's just about thawed, so we're going to use this on the big one. I'll show you how to get quite a few baits out of a herring. Oh. Well, that's one way of doing it, just snap it in half when it's still frozen. Silly move, Jimbo. That's a rookie mistake, man. What are you doing? That can go back in there. It's a good thing about herring. If you don't catch any fish with it, you need it. So what we'll do is we'll plonk this here, right, like so. That way you should be able to see it if it goes off, and away we go, it's all good. Oh, <laughs> hey Echidna, how are you mate? <laughs> Don't worry about it Sith, there's some people that go around, all they do in life is just, you know, thumbs down on streams. You know, because that's their calling. So. <laughs> right. Now, let's get the Shimano. Doesn't change what we're doing, Sith. Oh, that lovely familiar odour of herring. All right, there we go. Every time we've come to this spot, we've had a hook up with fish, you know? In Canberra, really? Agent Cal Gibbs, how are you, mate? Thanks, Will. Uh, no, Calcutta's don't do two speeds, Lowy. They only do a one speed. So, all right. So this is what we're going to do, famo. We're just going to chill out. Like I said, busy day at work. Oh, lovely. Now the whole river's covered in shade, so there should be habitat that's, you know, um, accessible. We are at low tide, so we have the same amount of fish in a smaller amount of water, you know. So hopefully work, everything works in our favour. Now, I did have a little bit of a nibble, so I'm just going to wait. Okay? I'll just get to chat in a second, let me just, you know, 
zone in here, fam, because remember what happened last time? We are fishing away, fishing away, fishing away, and then Woompa out of nowhere. I've got this drag locked right up, famo. Muley seems to be the bait that works here, above all else, you know, which is interesting. Low tide is another story altogether though. All right, I'm gonna free up the spool on that. I'm just gonna let the line run free, right? Work on the old tan on the legs, you know? And thanks people, 18 people watching. Thank you very, very much once again for giving up your time. Hope that you're enjoying the content, all right? And like I said, we're just gonna see how we go today. Lost a fish the other day that was bugging me. I couldn't even move it. And you know when you've lost a good fish. Okay. I know because I've lost so many. All oh, right. Get a bit of sun. Okay. Echidna, how are you, mate? Cal, what's going on? Will, what about you, mate? What are you up to? See three eight him in the morning, eh? And hit me old bourbon. Had a big bad day, or Manzi, how the cat's going? Drink wasser, welcome. Like I said, fam, if you're new to the stream, please subscribe, and above all else, please like the live stream because that's what YouTube looks at. Oh, funnily enough, it doesn't bother checking the dislike, it's only the likes. <laughs> oh, who won the rugby, Will? Man, it's nice to just relax. All blacks. I shouldn't have really asked that question because we already knew the answer, didn't we? <laughs> oh, no, Uggy. How you hold? You still got hair left or not? Oh, I love it. You're hiding from the family while they're watching a movie that you genuinely hate. Oh, okay. Which one's that? Honeymoon in Vegas or something? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, well, I think it's fantastic that, you know, a small country like New Zealand has adopted Union as their national sport and their world leaders at that game, you know. And I still say this to this day, the best international captain I've ever seen in any sport Forget forget Freddie Flintoff, forget Eels, Sean Fitzpatrick, mate. What a champ. Absolute champ. A zero yesterday. Well, technically, that's, uh, yeah, okay. It's a bit harsh, Huggy. Mate, take it from me. Hold on to your hair as long as you can, mate. Just trust me on that one. Okay. the stream coming in loud and clear beautiful just like being here yourself fam <whistles> 
all the mosquitoes. Yeah, pretty busy, Will. Just, uh, you know, toiling away, mate, as you do. You know, I've always worked, even while I was streaming, you know, so... Uh, don't know, Lucky. I mean, you know... Yeah... Yeah, it's still Sean Pitts. What? Yeah, it's still Sean Fitzpatrick for me, mate. Just like real, you know. Okay, Lowy. <whistles> this is the time of year that the snakes come out, fam. We're going to start doing a few campfire cooking streams, famo. All right, I'm going to help everyone remember and learn how to relax, okay? It's what? Breeding time? Huh? What are you talking about, Willis? Oh, don't move that. Oh! <laughs> I don't know, Uggy, you know, like you shaved the head and I thought, where's this going? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're not going to, are you going to grow the mutton chops like tune or what? Or are you going to, you know... Mutton chops thesaurus, man. Oh, oh, don't do that. Yeah, that's the problem. Tiger snakes. Oh, shit. That's my phone. See, that's in context. I dropped my phone. On its face. I'm such a bad parent. Oh, it is, sir, drink water. That's why I keep coming back here, mate. You know, it's easy. We can reverse up with the ute. We know there's fish here. Oh, no, Manzi. You know that guy on the ad that keeps dropping his phone? You know? And he goes, oh, it's all right. I am that guy. Oh, sugar. I am that guy. Oh. No, don't ban anyone. There we go. Uh, I don't know, Manzi. I've come close a few times. Let's just see if there's a uh, bait still on me in there. Late afternoon, low tide. I would prefer later. Me personally, late afternoon, high tide's always the best for fishing. Always. Guaranteed. Now, don't move it around, Jimbo, like a yo-yo this time. Uh, that is the money, as they say in the classics. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yes, we're about 35 hours south of Crocodiles, Will. Otherwise, I would not be doing this, mate. I would only do this if there was someone with a high-powered 303 or something there pointed at the water. I'm not a dad, Manzi. There you go. Yeah. I've never bred. Or well, not that I know of.
No, I mean Western Australia will. <laughs> Joe Elk, how are you, mate? Welcome, Joe Elk. Hang on. Uh, if that bird tries to do a poo on me, um, Joe Elk, Canada. Were you from Canada? Oh, that's right, Will, so. Thanks, Joe, welcome, mate. Don't forget to subscribe, pal, and don't forget to tell everyone about the stream and YouTube, okay? Isn't this magnificent fam? We're just sitting by a river. I've reversed the ute up, we got the camera. We got this, we're chilling out. We got a big bait in the middle. Norway. Joe Elk. Were you from the northernmost part of Norway? Did you put something in Discord once, Joe? Either way, good to see you in here, mate. Welcome. We're just doing a bit of brim fishing this afternoon. Um, on some of the other videos, you'll see where we got a couple of 42 centimetre brim. Yesterday, I dropped one that was a beast. I reckon it would have pushed 50 easy. So, welcome, Joe. Is it true, Joe, that everyone in Norway wants to live in Sweden, or do the Swedes make that up? I think he had a good win in the football overnight. Look at the clarity of that screen. No, the Swedes want to leave there. <laughs> yeah, because that's meant to be a standard joke, isn't it? I thought it was the other way around. Anyway. Do they really? So the wages are bad in Norway. Yeah, that's interesting. Lord Glenwick, it's fantastic to see so many people in here. G'day. How are you, mate? Oh, is it? Okay, so it averages out. Lord Glenwick, how are you, mate? Oh, Jimmy, you idiot. You're charging the battery charger, not the phone, man. You wait and see. Murphy's Law. I've put that down. The fish will hit it. You watch. Bet you any money. Oh, don't, don't, don't. You got COVID. Sorry to hear that, mate. All right, now we're cooking with gas. All right, so what's happened is the sun's dropped behind a big gum tree. Oh, hey, get out of there. What are you doing? Dropped behind a big gum tree over there. So see how we got shade everywhere? 
So it doesn't really matter where you cast, but you're still got to aim for structure, right? So I'm just going to leave that there, give that a bit, and if that doesn't work, we're going to go straight across the river here and aim for that snag there. You've got to look for things to throw or cast a bait at, fam. They're not going to sit out in the open, very rarely. If you're trolling, they might come out and hit one and go back, but you've got to find snags and structure, you know? But low tide isn't the best. Oh man, this is lovely, love it. Thank you people, 17 people watching, that is absolutely awesome. Thank you very, very much. We're gonna stay here till uh, night time. Got me headlamp. <sighs> Yo. They're sharp, those hooks, razor sharp. Glad to hear it, mate. I had my first Pfizer injection last week on Thursday, I think, from memory. Man. <sighs> Rightio. Oh, did you, Will? Okay. This is danger time for tiger snakes too, famo. They come out at night and they love frogs. Yeah, I got up halfway through the night trying to get a dolphin off me, mate. I'm not good with injections. What's a tern doing this far upstream? They're fish eaters. It's been pretty bad. And you, you. <sighs> hey, Majestic Llama, how are you, bud? I was meant to go today. I went down really early, about 6.30, and checked it out. There's still a bit much weed, and the um, beaches aren't really formed yet. Like, uh, it was high tide this morning, so the waves were right up nearly against the dunes. If I'd have parked with the car, I would have been knackered, you know? But, um,. I'm hoping by about next week, because we've got a few days of wet weather again, might have a change, but we're going to see how we go. I need to head down south, fam. I need to head down south and go to one of the real remote beaches this time of year, because a lot of the gummy sharks come in. You know, that's one shark that I'll eat because they're not endangered or critically listed, you know? Thanks for coming in, Majestic Llama. Wow. So does it feel like a really bad flu, Sean? Or is it like bad, bad? Is it more like pneumonia? I don't know whether you've had pneumonia before. Don't worry, Majestic Llama. I'm hanging out to get on the beach, mate. We've got all the lights and everything ready to rock, mate. You know, we've got the generator, we've got the lights, we've got everything. So...
A lot of big tailor, okay. Yeah. One of the state records has been caught down south though, uh, Lama. Yeah, uh, it was 10 kilos, but that was years ago. But then they another one got it from up north. There's one spot down there at the mouth of the Donnelly River. They get a big tailor once in a blue moon, but it's usually a big size of a salmon, you know. Yeah, you and me both, mate. I love the beach fishing. And hopefully I don't have another hat incident, you know what I mean? I'm going to give this another five minutes. Right. And then we're going to do a big long range cast in there. But this is the thing with Brim Famo. Right. You cast out, you wait an hour nowhere, bam, you know. Oh, it is, Will. And look, mate, fishing's not a competition. You know what I mean? I mean, it is if you treat it that way. But all we're doing, we're just chilling out. Us and the fish, the community's with us. We're all just chilling out, mate, and enjoying it, you know? And I mean, with so many people in COVID, the last thing you want to do is have someone carrying on like a $2 watch, you know? So. We've got the bird life. We've got a river, you know, 20 feet from the car. Beautiful. Got a bait in the water. What more do you want? You know, well, fish, obviously, but. I'm sorry to hear that you can't walk, Sith. Oh, I don't wish that upon anyone. Okay. Headache for five days, fever for four, severe sore throat for three, ache the whole time and upset stomach, cold shower four in the morning. Hang on, give me a second. Just give me a second, fam. So now the weather's, uh, weather, now the actual temperature's dropped, which is good. What do you mean minus 117? Come on. 19 people watching. Thanks, crew. Oh, no. Was that an accident, Sith, or, or, or like a work accident or a car crash, or? I wouldn't wish that upon anyone, mate. Oh, dear. Rightio. Well, 
Righto, time for a long range presentation, Famo. Yeah, that'll do. Because it's low tide, you want a little bit further back from the bank, you know? Yeah. Oh no, stop moving the bait, Jim. Oh, what a lovely day. This is the typical spring days, famo. No wind, nice bright sunshine, a little bit cool in the morning, a little bit cool in the afternoon. Good stuff. Oh dear. Is that an actual condition, Sith? I think you mentioned it in the stream. And look, if there's anyone that's going through COVID, I'm hoping these streams give you a little bit of relaxation, you know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, like I said, we were in a five day lockdown and that was bad enough. All right, there's a bit of movement in the line, famo, hang on. Osteogenesis, that's right. Imprint, all oh, right, I'll have a look at that. I'm sorry to hear that, Sith. We got a bite. We got a bite. Come on, take it. We got a bite, fam. Beautiful, we're on. Lovely fish. Lovely. F oh, got off. <laughs> oh, that's that one from the other day. Oh, that's that one from the other day. Oh, that's twice. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> I need coffee. Really? How did that not hook up? How did that not hook up? I felt the weight of the fish, everything. <sighs> oh dear. Right, that's it. The only problem is it won't bite again now. Just as I hooked that, I felt it roll because the rod went that way. Usually that means they turn and try and drag the line across their body. That's been caught before. That's a good fish. That's been caught before. Oh shit. Great, excuse me, I've just got to wash my foot. This is how nature works. Because when you make an idiot of yourself live on stream, you drop your whole foot in a cow pat four times the size of your head. Oh. Oh, God. Yep, that one had a crust and a half. Oh, get under there. I think I'll just...
There would have to be Mulloway in here, fam. Well, at least we're learning where all the snags are, famo. You know what I mean? That's the main thing. When you go to a new spot, Oh, okay. So what, um, what do you normally shoot? What, what sort of, um, rifles do you shoot, mate? Or do you use pistols, or? See, that's the thing in the States. You can just rock up anywhere and blow stuff away, you know? On a range and that sort of stuff. Rightio. Let's go again, shall we? My only saving grace with that fish, right, is if they're a mating pair. Normally at this time of year, it's quite uncanny. Like the other day, we caught two 42 centimetre fish. Right. Same spot on a roll. Ah. <sighs> And big fish will pick up... Oh, you're kidding. No, I can't be. Surely not. Pick up a bait, swim with it, drop it. Pick it up, swim with it, drop it. Like a cat smacking a mouse around before it kills it. Oh, that's life, sir. Drink water. We'll get there. Don't worry, mate. They're very flighty in this river. In rivers down south, they take it. It's like trying to stop a Volkswagen here. They pick it up, boom, pick it up, boom, you know. Totally different world. Six hundred yards. Wow. Yeah, I watched something on YouTube the other day. They had an old sniper from the army that was in his eighties, like he was eighty-five, and they got him to um, use an open sight on a target, like I think it was a kilometre away, and he hit it or eight hundred yards or something. Take your hat off to him, you know. Six hundred yards, wow. Okay, we just had another bite, fam. They must all so this is the thing. When you go fishing into a new spot like this, you gotta learn how it works. So when we fish low tide. What we'll do is we'll cast everything across at that snag across the river there, you know? A kilometre away. What, what did Streamlabs do there? I have no idea. Sorry about that, Sith. That was a really good deep-bodied fish, fam. There's... No, surely not. The big one looks like it's just about to go off. This spot is awesome, famo. If we didn't get permission to fish on private property, we would never have come here. Every time we've been here, we've nearly hooked a fish. Doesn't matter what time of day, what time of whatever, because this is surrounding farmland, this is just excellent, fam.
Your shoulder hates you shooting handguns more than automatic rifles. Really? Might be a different muscle set, Sith, too, because... Um, but if you're going to use a pistol, don't you use the cushion grip like that? No? Yeah, yeah, that's right, too, that, yeah. Even like a little 9mm Beretta's got a bit of a kick, mate, you know? The reason why I like to hit fish as soon as I feel the weight is I don't want them to swallow the bait. I want to hook them in the mouth. You know, I just... Uh... Uh, no, I don't find many mussels down here, uh, Lowy. Um... If there's anyone that's in the chat from Perth and you go fishing in the Swan River for brim... Just down from the Narrows at the South Perth Yacht Club, there's a big weed bed. Buy yourself one of those little butterfly nets and run your butterfly net through the weed bed to get all these beautiful shrimp about two inches long to three inches long. Best bait for brim around the Narrows, fam. Guaranteed. Armalite. Sorry, mate. On Tuesday, fam, we're going to put halogen globes in this because when we start four-wheel driving and we start doing the long-distance runs down south, we're going to need to have them. I can't afford a bull bar and light bar yet, but that's further down the track, you know. Yeah, well, most of the crew that I hang with down south and that, when they hunt and that, they say AR as automatic rifle uh, Sith. So I'm sorry about that, mate. I hope you don't think I'm a nupty or anything. <sighs> I had one job, fam, and blew it. Oh, no, that's right, mate. No dramas. You shouldn't have said anything different to what you said, mate. That was not an onus on you. That was an onus on me, buddy. No stress, mate. So, fam, is there any um, content that you'd like to see? Um, Lama said they want to see beach fishing, which I want to do as well, which is what we sort of started the channel on. So is there anything that you want to see? Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated, you know? Yeah, okay. One thing I do like about the US, mate, is you're allowed to protect your home from intruders. I quite like that law. Beach fishing, yeah. Oh, like I said, famo, as soon as we're able to get onto the beach, uh, and now I've got new technology for the streaming. I've got some really good gear that'll allow us to get reception in areas we couldn't get it before. Hey, Sean, yeah, me too, mate. But we've had our proper winter too. We've had one of our best winters for a while, famo, you know. Catch and cook, yeah. I want to do a, um, I want to do a campfire cooking stream, fam, like the old days, you know, where you'd like uh, everybody would like get together and um, you know, just sit around a campfire, cook food slowly, you know. You could smell it cooking in the uh, coals and that sort of stuff. So. I'm going to give that about 15 minutes. That's nowhere near it, Jim. That's an embarrassment. You call yourself an angler? Uh, 
Okay, Jim, live on stream. Two casts in exactly the same spot. Let's be a bit more reckless, mate. Okay. That's a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, Sith, we took the boat back um, as per our agreement. Um, and the biggest problem at the moment with COVID is supply. You know, like, oh, mate, we're okay, okay here in WA, but all of the supplies for here come out of the east. And... Um, don't know, uh, Sith. Yeah, don't know. Yeah, it's all right, mate. Don't stress about it. And that's the um, Streamlabs filter, not ours, Sith. Oh, yeah, mate. Okay, cool, mate. I just hope you don't think it was us that put the filter on, you know. That was another good fish. Man. You and me both, Sith. Oh, with a lot of the um, hate that's on social platforms at the moment, they're really, like, filtering everything, you know? Some, some words that you don't think are offensive, you know? Like, just, yeah. I didn't know I could turn my esky into a bloody... What a brilliant rod holder! Look at that! Fifty-one years of age, and I figured it out. Now look at that, fam. You tuck the butt of the rod into the corner, and you rest the reel with the handle down there, and it's a rod holder. Unbelievable. I'm going to do a little YouTube segment on that. Look at that, fam. You put the um, butt of the fishing rod in the corner, fold that thing down, and it's a rod holder. Look. Brilliant. And who thought they were just for putting beer in, you know? I can't believe I dropped another fish. How to fish, uh, he's a grown man, mate, he'll figure it out. Nearly got it. Hang on, we'll do that again.
I don't know whether you can see it, just over the other side here, there's just a little snag sticking out of the water at probably about 30 centimetres. Just going to aim for it. That's pretty good where the sinker is. Lovely. Yeah, it is, Sith. Sorry, mate. I'll have a look later on. <laughs> yeah, that's right, low, isn't it? And thanks, people. We've got 19 people in here watching. Thank you very, very much. And look, if you're new here and you're not part of the Discord yet, if you type in exclamation mark Discord in the chat, it'll bring up the link to our Discord. So that'll let you know when we're going live and what's going on in the channel. So let me just see if I can bring that up, because I did add this as a uh, command. Fail. Hey, there we go, it worked. So yeah, if you click on the link in the chat, famo, that'll take you to our Discord and you can join there, okay? And with the Discord, it's linked to our YouTube and it's linked to our Twitter, so when we tweet that we're going live, you'll be able to know what's going on. And we've got a good group of people in the Discord, you know? Absolutely lovely here. Frank the Tank, how are you mate? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you there, Frank. This is one thing that um, I like with our community fam. We're still able to interact, you know what I mean? And um, it will get busier eventually, but at least we'll always keep that connection with the community, you know? All right, that's it. Rightio famo, that's better. This is not as big as the one that I lost first up. Come on fella. Come on. Nice fish though, good little size. I'm just going to wet my hands because we've got acidic hands and that sort of stuff. And you don't want to, um, quite a good fighter. Come on little fella. Yeah, this is nowhere nearly as big as the other one that we dropped. There we go fam. Beautiful Western Australian black brim. Now I've, I've wet my left hand. Come on, mate. There we go. Right on the lip. Right on the lip. It nearly got off. There we go. Back we go. Quick measure. Don't want them out the water for too long. The fish here are good. 35. Nice. See you, fella. Straight in. See you next time. Boom. I could actually move that one. I couldn't move the other one. So, at low tide, we've got a fish across the river. Nice. So, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use that same bait. 
I'll be able to get another cast out of this. No, I won't. I'm going to use a fresh bait. Yeah, that was nowhere nearly as big as the other one, fam. Not even close. Not even close, fam, eh? No, not really, Frank. We got two the other day that were 40, well, 42. You got to remember, mate. Right? <laughs> I got a 10 inch hand span, Frank. See that? That's 50 centimeters. So if I'm holding a fish like that, right? And that was about, you know, yeah, about probably five or six either side or whatever. Or 10, yeah, that's about right. But I make all fish. I'm actually an axe handle between the shoulders, Frank. I've actually, if you've got an axe handle and put it across the shoulders, that's the difference, the distance between the two points on my shoulders, about there. So, hopeless. Worst bloke in the world to take a fish photo. That's me. Right. Now, let's get another bit of muley. What I'm going to do is I think there's a snag across the river there that runs parallel to the bank. So what I think's happened is judging by the angle on that branch there, there's a branch that connects to that there. So all through there, there's fish, right? So let's go again. Jimbo, that is nowhere near it, man. And seriously, when you're casting in that, don't worry about distance, always worry about accuracy, right? Always try and get it in the spot that you want to get it in. And see this, we had a few casts before, right? And we didn't scare the fish, so that's a good thing. The one that I dropped, I reckon would have been every bit of, you can tell when you've got a good, good fish on, right? I reckon the one we dropped would have probably nudged between the 45 and 50 scale. Oh, Jim, look, just. <sighs> right. Stop chickening out, man. That's the spot. <clears throat> the bigger fish are far more cunning, you know? Frank, the biggest one we've caught live on stream, buddy, was 48. Remember on the 6 gang? I thought it was a Mulloway, ripped it in, and there's this monster silver brim. Like it was a, it's a black brim, but it was a silver brim. It must have just come in off the salt. You know, the one that I dropped, I reckon 45, 50, you can just tell, like, that one there, I, I set the hook, right, and I could feel the fish straighten because it didn't go back down. The other one, when I hit it, it must have turned on the line and tried to rub the line against its scales and its gills and just leave it at that. It didn't even have a chance. The one here the other day... <laughs> It was like a cement drum rolling back into the snags. I've got one spot down south, Frank, where you catch black brim up to 20 inches long, right? And you also catch snapper in the same spot, like juvenile pinkies, 40 centimetres, 35 centimetres in a river. Only place I've ever seen it. Hang on. We could be on in a second, famo. Yeah, the state record here is 52 centimetres, Frank. You know when you've got a big brim, the line vibrates. You like, uh, you set the hook and you max the bend of the rod and the tip's going like that. 
Oh, don't worry, mate. We'll be doing it live on stream soon, Frank. I've got brim spots down south, people, that if we get onto fish and we can land them, they'll blow your mind. They're huge. They're like snapper. You bring it in, you go, wow, is it a snapper or is it a brim? You know? Well, that's your username on YouTube, mate, and that's what I'll call you on YouTube, and it's not a bad thing, sort of, not to mention the username from another platform, you know? <laughs> oh, it's all right, Frank. I think it's for the better, mate. YouTube's a great platform, famo. I mean, look at the quality of the picture. We've got the sun on the left-hand side there. You've got the silhouette on the water, and everything's so vivid and bright, you know? It's great. Now, why did that water move over there? Oh, this is pretty dirty, uh, Frank. Um, this is uh, like early spring, sort of late winter, so... It's fairly clear about, say, eight foot from the edge, but we're still waiting for the silt to drop. There's no runoff, you know. I don't, wouldn't go that far, Lowy. You've got to stop drinking so much in the afternoon, mate. I keep telling you, Lowy. Going to try and get Lowy down south so we can find him a wife. Christopher, how was it, my friend? Good to see you, buddy. What, what are you doing? We just caught a 35-centimetre brim, Christopher. One year, uh, chat, I was at a place called Walpole. I hooked this brim, right? Usually with brim, if they go out once and they come back in, they're anywhere up to 25 to 30 centimetres. If they go out, then they cut across and they come back in, maybe 35 to 40, 42, you know. This thing, I hit it, it went right out wide, and it came right across wide, and it had about five zigzags. And when it came up and looked at me, honest to God, it was about that wide between the eyes, and the hook snapped. Oh, oh still to this day. Oh, still to this day, famo. Player Lakes. Okay, mate. Oh, mate. It's like Mulloway. You get a Mulloway that goes on one run and it comes back in anywhere up to five to six kilo. Goes out, comes back, goes out, comes back, maybe 10. Goes out, comes back, goes out, comes back, goes out and comes back, you know, 15. When they go out and you can't stop them and then they go up and down the beach and you think it's a stingray, get the weight of the scales out, you know. And that's something that you only pick up with experience, famo. You know what I mean? That's just experience. <whistles> oh, 
Oh, that's nice, nice, Christopher. What sort of fish, sir? Right. We just had a little nibble, famo. Hang on. Just had a really little nibble. So it's either one or two things. Either it's a small, small fish or... Yeah, the line's moving. Come on. They're so finicky in this river compared to others. Come on. Right, so now what we have, okay, is we have an even blanket of shade across the whole river. Right, we have an even blanket of shade. So now everything's in our favour, right? Because now they'll come out and they'll start swimming around and that sort of thing. They're not exposed to the, the sunlight and that, you know? So what I'm going to do... Out of the way, Mozzie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fish this snag again, right? I'm going to fish this snag again right here on my left-hand side where we dropped the big one yesterday. That's nowhere near it. Lovely. I've got one spot down at Pemberton. You know that big brook dam I showed you in that other video? One day I was fishing this point on the dam. Right. And um, I was fishing this point on the dam. And uh, you ever get that feeling that something or someone's watching you? I got that feeling, right? And I turned around, and out from undercut bank, there was this mature tiger snake that had a, that was about as thick as my wrist there, right? About this long, just looking at me. So I would have been in the water waiting here, about, say, 10 feet in the water, and the snake would have been where the camera is, out from an undercut bank, where all my gear was. Needless to say, a little bit nerve-wracking, you know? That rod there, I'm not going to touch it until the fish bites the bait. So. Let's have a look. You got perch, pike, bleak heel, ruddy feather, and roach. Nice one. <laughs> well, they found a um. Oh. Not again. All right, we're just going to wait for this one, Famo. Every once in a while, I see a little bit of water movement in front of the snag. So, what I've done is I've cast to the short end of the snag here. Oh, get out. 
cast to the short end of the snag here, right? And um, I'm hoping when it hits, it's an instant like hook set and we can rip the fish out, you know? Hey, Christopher, go to the um, Discord, right? If you go to the Discord, um, you can post as many links in the Discord as you want. I'll give you the link. Hang on. Thank you, Christopher. That's good. The more interaction we have in the Discord, the better, you know? That's what it's there for. Because we don't allow anyone to post links in the chat here. Certainly getting cold, fam. I better put on my green jumper, I think. <laughs> nice one, lots of people do that Sith, but sort of it's a bit hard post-COVID, you know, with all the travel restrictions. Oh, that's not a good idea. Oh, it's this, hang on. It's just nice to be able to go down to a river and catch a fish fam, you know? Famo, I just figured out why this spot works so well. There's a creek over the other side that feeds into the river here. That's why it affects the water flow and there's a swell. Excellent. This reminds me of fishing Wooda Burrup for uh, redfin perch and that. Yeah, general's good, mate. No, that wouldn't help. And look, people, thank you very, very much. There's 24 people in the chat at the moment. According to the um, phone, so thank you, fam. It's going a bit quick. Thanks for sharing your experiences with us there, Christopher. Okay, so, I'm wondering if that's a perennial stream or intermittent stream. We'll give this five more minutes and then we'll do another big long cast across the river, fam. <clears throat> there must be fish here, there's cormorants every everywhere.
Thank you, Christopher. So with this water here, famo, right, it's pretty shallow to about here. And then there's a massive drop off right there into a big channel. It's probably four or five meters in the middle. And that water is absolutely freezing cold, which is good for this time of year. Oh, it's lovely. That'll get the old uh, feet fired up. All right, that's a that's the lion's tensioning fan. We're going to get a bite in a second. Come on. Some, have, yep, something's having a look at that. Something's having a look at that. Oh, come on. Try not to move it away from there. Good, good. All right, we're going to be on in a second, famo. Just saw a couple of short little like movements there. Something is having a look at that, fam. Come on. Don't do that. You only need to put the slightest amount of tension on a bait and your fish will drop the bait. Oh, that's awesome, Christopher. That's why that's why we stream, mate, so people can watch, learn how we do it, and the fact that we're using techniques in Australia that work in Europe, that's awesome, mate. Thank you very much, Christopher, for sharing that with us. That's great. See? Not many other, and I'm not trying to sound like a toss here, but not many other streamers can say that, but we get that all the time in our streams, fam. That's awesome. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Righto, fam. We're going to have one shot at this. Nah, bugger. Yep, it had a look at that. Missed it. Hang on. Let me just reposition this hook. Bugger. That is the cast. That's the cast that's going to do the job, fam. That's the cast that's going to do the job. It's amazing how many more fish you catch, Christopher, with three hooks instead of two. It's amazing how many more fish you catch. That extra hook makes all the difference. And I know with the pike, you need to use fairly, you know, good sized baits.
okay. That's great, Christopher. I'm really happy for you, mate. How big was the pike? Hopefully that fish has forgotten the other time we stuck a hook in it. Oh, okay, mate. That's very interesting. Oh, catfish, yeah. I mean, catfish are a, a mainstay in the States, aren't they, Sith? All right, so what we'll do, fam, we'll give this another 10 minutes. Right, we've got that on the right spot. Good cast. Bait set. We're just going to wait. That's magnificent. Look at the green in that. All the 28s nestling in for the night. Won't be far off, I don't think. Well, that's exactly right, Christopher, you know, and I mean, the good thing is catch and release is becoming more and more popular, mate. You still have a lot of people that sort of, um, you know, I mean, it's like these people that put blood in the water to try and catch sharks and that, and they try and like, you know, hook into these Goliath groper and that. There is nothing more boring for me, and this is just me personally, I can't watch that stuff, mate, it just bores me, you know? And I mean, if the fish are there, they're a relatively easy target. And then you see people using juvenile sharks and all sorts of stuff just to catch a fish that you know will hit any bait, like. But like I said, that's just my personal thing. Me, I'd much rather use light lines and try and catch finicky brim, which are very hard to catch, you know. So I've spent, what, 45 years fishing for brim? You know what I mean? And you're always learning something new. There's always a different technique as much as a lot of the old techniques work, you know? And when we find new spots like this, we've got to learn how to read the waterway, you know? That line just straightened for a second. I'm going to give it a bit of slack. Right.
Right, that's straightened. There's something that's having a look at that bait. Let's just get this out here. I don't know what's going on there. I've let the line out. There's not too much water flow as you can see, but normally when you let the line down, it drops. Every time I've let it go, it straightens. So something's having a look at something there. The sort of, the line straightened for a second, then it dropped, then it straightened for another nanosecond, then they dropped. So I think there's something looking at it. So we're just gonna let it, you know, do its thing. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's... Yeah. Well, fam... I think the... I think 8 million sharks get taken for the shark fin trade every year now. That's a lot of them, you know? And to, like, cut the fins off and just leave the rest of the animal to die and sink in the water is a total waste of a life, you know what I'm saying? That is really strange. That bait is moving. Okay, I'm not going to do that again, just in case that's a really big fish that's being very, very tentative. One of the, one of the biggest brim strikes I've ever had was it was literally felt like this on the rod, like a little tap. And that also happened with um, trout fly fishing. I felt this little like, tap drifting a nymph and I went boom and the rod tip hit the water, you know. You can never tell what, I mean... Uh, I'm still annoyed with that other one I dropped. They do it with dolphins. Yeah, that's frustrating. Really, Vault? Wow. I admire you for that, mate. Not many people do that. Not many people would go to that extent, you know what I mean? Oops. Bit of an Arlec light there. How does it look on the screen? Let's have a look. These pick up the slightest filter of light, fam. Thanks, people. This is awesome. 20 viewers over nearly an hour and three quarters. Thank you very much for giving up your time to come in. I really appreciate it, you know. All this adds to the watch time. We'll be partnered before we know it. I love this. I've always been a river rat. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was younger, I'd, um, everybody would be going out to the pub. I'd be driving down to the coast and fishing for brim, you know, whiting King George. Or I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning and go and um, fish for trout in Pemberton and Redfin Perch. So... Things were a bit different back in the 70s and 80s. You could use all sorts of stuff for bait back then, you know, so. If I didn't know better, I reckon that's gonna, line's gonna go off in a second or two. Oh, that's exactly right, Christopher, you know, and I agree with you totally, mate. It's like that, um, 
remember that stream that we had last year when we still had the boat and we saw that it was about, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12. I mean, I wasn't going to dive in the water to have a look. And we found that tiger shark, remember? What a magnificent looking animal up close, you know? And then we saw that little baby hammerhead that looked like an antenna swimming through the water. God, that was funny. It was only about that long. It was, whoa. It was wider than nearly than it was longer, you know? You've got to respect your environment, fam. You've got to respect your fish, you know? I mean, look, we're not in a third world country. I can understand people that fish for food in third world countries, right? But I mean, you know, we've got plenty to eat in Australia, so I'm not going to kill a slow growing fish like a black brim. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let it go so it grows bigger. It's like that day at Augusta. What did we catch? We caught and released about 45 brim on fly gear. One after another, we were getting them on the flies we were tying. And, um, you know, if we weren't that way inclined, yeah, oh, anyway, I'm not going to go on about it. But the other thing is too, like I did before when I caught that fish, I wet the hand picked it up with a wet hand, took the hook out, showed you, weighed it straight back in the water. Lucky if it was out of the water for 10 or 15 seconds and it was still wet when I put it back in the water. It hadn't dried off the scales. So many others, you know, you just see them out of the water for so long and fish drown in air, you know, so. Right. Just checking for snakes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in The big bit of herring. This is a beautiful reel, fam. We are gonna get some fish on this. This is an absolutely beautiful reel. Right, that can go back into the esky because you very, until we get on the beach and catch a few herring. I mean, herring are good eating fish and there's no minimum legal size. There's only a, like a bag limit. So, you know, they're a good fish to fish for, fam. Right, so put that in here. And once again, fam, thank you very, very much for your support. I bought that with my last payment from the old platform. That is going to bring us years and years of use on YouTube, fam. You wait and see. Mark my words, okay? <laughs> oh, it's going to be interesting, Sith, you know, like, I don't think they ever will, mate. All I know is, I think this is a much better platform, just no one knows about it yet, you know. Is that a fish? You're kidding, yeah? I thought I had a hit then when I was holding the rod. Come here. Nah. Have we lost the bait though? Right, I will have one last cast on a spot that we haven't fished yet, fam. Now, um, this is going to be what I call like a broadcast cast. I have no idea what's over there. I've got no visual indicator on the water of a snag or anything. I'm just going to have a ping. Mind you, that landed rather close to another snag that I didn't see until I cast it. Oh, it's just good to get your feet dirty, you know. We haven't fished that side before. That's the first time we've sort of cast towards those snags. And because we're using that reel a lot more and the lines become a little bit more supple and a little less like wire, we're able to get these good distances. Prior to braid coming around, fam, you know, monofilament, doesn't matter how good your monofilament was, because of the stretch and the friction and all that and all the slap on your guides, because the biggest problem with monofilament, because it's a, uh, a stretchy type of line, 
When you go to cast with it, it always has loops. So you've got these big loops, right, like this. You've got these big loops like this, trying to feed through your first stripper guide like that. With braid, your loops are tiny, so you have much less resistance. That's why areas that we couldn't fish in the early days, we can fish now because of no stretch, you know? So it's all good. And the best thing about this is, you know, we're providing content, we're experiencing nature together. You know, we have so many birds in Australia and you can hear the frogs and everything. When you hear frogs like that, you know there's snakes around. If you're ever in Australia and you're walking along in the bush near a creek and you see a whole hump, like a whole heap of frogs jumping out, stop, because usually that means there's a snake nearby, you know? Jackson, how are you, bud? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right, Sith. Apparently, Elon Musk is bringing out a streaming platform, fam. That'll be interesting. Oh, shit. Later on in the season... When we have those high tides at midnight and 2 a.m., right, we'll be down here fishing for River Mulloway. That's the best time to go fishing for them, I find. I've very rarely caught Mulloway during the day in the rivers. I've always caught them on dusk or just after dusk, you know, so. Yeah, I don't think YouTube pushes it that much. Um, compared to uh, other platforms, people. You know, there's always both sides to stories with a lot of things, you know. So, um, yeah, I find it very interesting. And, I mean, I tweeted at YouTube um, help the other day, and they actually, you, they actually tweeted back. I was shocked. You know, nothing like that ever happened on the other um, platform. Unless, you know, I mean, you see with the big streamers and that, but, you know, when you're small fry, they don't want to know you, so, you know, but I mean, um, and when they sent me the, the, like, the message, I messaged them back, and, um, yeah, so, that's going to be interesting. Give it another five minutes. I'll clean, clean my feet again. Ooh. Jake Hudson, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream, bud. Oh, yeah, the, a lot of people don't like the Canadian geese. I've never seen one or heard one, mate. Yeah, they did, Sith. They responded. And not only did they respond to my tweet, they responded to about five tweets. And um, then I got a message from them. I was absolutely gobsmacked, just the re being recognised by the platform like that when we're in our infancy stage of our stream, I mean, you know, that's worth millions. You know, that's just priceless. You just, you, you can't believe it, you know what I mean? Magpie geese, okay. What I've done, fam, is I've cast fairly close. I think there's another little creek that's coming in across the river there. Wherever you've got like a creek going into a river or you've got where two waterways meet are always good spots.
probably drink wasser, but the picture clarity is nowhere nearly as good as this. Oh, do they? <laughs> Wow, closest is 300 kilometers. Jeepers. It's a good, that's a good three or four hour drive, isn't it? Come on. Can't believe that. One goal, one today, fam. One goal, we hooked and landed a fish and a point. We hooked one and it dropped the hook. That first one was a big fish, though. Poof, really big fish. And unfortunately, they don't bite again, do they? <whistles> yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to put up a timetable of when we're going to go um, fishing again. Now, in September, in a certain spot down south, in an inlet for two weeks, all the big flathead from the ocean come in and they'll spawn in the inlet. So we catch King George, sand flathead, you know, the bar-tailed flathead, and you do get the odd blue spot flathead. The blue spot flathead grow as big as duskies over east, I think but they're still quite a slender fish. And um, there's also another variety of flathead that I've caught there before. It's called a marble flathead. I got one that was one centimetre under the Australian record. I'd love to be able to do that again. So um, yeah, and in this spot where we're gonna go, we're probably gonna take the kayak and uh, we're just gonna go to different spots. What you do, do usually is you just fish your little drop-offs and all that sort of stuff. And we'll have one stream one day where we use fly gear and then the next day we'll use bait. But, um, you know, on the fly gear, I've caught and released oh, 80 fish in a day. It's great. Love it. Not a single bait, you know. <sighs> yes, I think this low tide's going to peak down, fam. Very stable, that is brilliant. I know one thing, it uses far less power on this platform compared to the other one. Just to give you an idea of how good these Samsungs are, fam, I'm using an Ultranote. I've got an Arlec LED light there, okay? And uh, it's doing a great job. Alrighty, so how you see it on the screen is a lot brighter than what it really is. Thirty inch monitor. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to have to wind it up, Famo. I love fishing on rivers. It's my favourite pastime. Beach is just as favourite, but you know, there's just something being about being on a river, you know what I mean? In the Australian bush like this, everything's in front of you, and you're trying to deceive a wild creature, you know what I mean? Into biting something that you've put on a hook. So hang on, I'll just get this in the car.
the old feet are going to smell tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Once again, never leave any rubbish at a fishing spot, fam. All right. Oops, I'll clean that later. All righty, well. Ralphie, what's going on, bud? Welcome, Ralphie. Don't forget to subscribe, Ralph, and turn your notifications on, please, mate. Good to see you in here, buddy. How you going? Now, everyone, it's nearly dark. Uh, I don't really want to um, hang out when the old uh, slitherers are around, you know. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll sign off. Stay safe and stay well. Be the best person you can be every day. Please tell everyone about the stream. Please tell everyone that we've shifted platforms and they're more than welcome in here anytime, okay? And uh, on top of that, a big shout out to our sponsors, Millard Marine, Qualia Reels, and also Rode Microphones. If you're an aspiring streamer, okay, get serious about your streaming, get serious about your audio, okay? Get yourself a Rode Microphone. All right, bye for now, fam. Thank you very much for giving up your Sunday evening or your Sunday morning, wherever you are in the world, to hang out with us, and I really appreciate your input into the stream. See you tomorrow.